Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about binary integer arithmetic, or you know, to put it more simply, we're going to learn how to add and subtract integers, both in unsigned as well as signed. Now, we, we've done just a little bit of this when we talked about two's complement. We uh, added one to the end of of a number because that's part two's complement. You invert all the bits, then add one. So if you have something like one zero zero one zero one zero zero plus one, it's easy. The zero and the one get added together, and you have a one in that position. But what if you have something like one zero one one zero one zero one one plus one? So any column with one plus one results in a zero for that column, with a carry of one to the next. So, for example, here, 1 plus 1 gives me 0, and I carried the 1 to the next column. That 1 plus 1 gives me a 0, and I also carry a 1 to the next column. Then 1 plus 0 is 1, and so forth. And the easy way to think about this is 1 plus 1 is 2, and the bit pattern for 2 is 1, 0. So keep that in mind. All right. Let's look at addition um, from an unsigned standpoint. So here we have two integers, 157 and 59, and those mathematically come out to 216. So this one's going to work out nicely, as we'll see. Uh, the bits for 157 are 1011, 1101. The bits for 59 are 00, 111, 011. We are performing 8-bit addition here, and that's important. Any addition we do, the, the number of bits are going to be fixed because that's the way things are when we're dealing with a CPU. So here's the, the addition. 1 plus 1 is a 0. Carry 1 to the next column. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is also a 0. Carry a 1 to the next column. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is a 0. And we carry a 1 to the next column. In this column, we have a 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, the bit pattern for which is 1, 1. So we have a 1 here, and then we again carry a 1 to the next column. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is a 1, carry a 1 to the next column. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is a 0, we carry a 1 to the next column. Then 1 plus 0 plus 0 is a 1, no carry. And then we have a 1 plus 0 is also a 1. So that's our final result. And looking at my calculator, let me put in that bit pattern. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 in 8 bits. That gives me a decimal 216. Let's actually add that in real quick. There we go. And again, it's important, both, both operands and the result must have the same number of bits. So pad things out to that number of bits if you need to, uh, just to make sure everything lines up. Now, in some situations, the result we're going to get is too large to fit into the number of bits we have. When this happens, we generate what's called a carry out. And so here's our example. We have the number, the decimal numbers 128 plus 135. Mathematically, this would give us 257. But that's not the correct answer. 257 doesn't fit into 8 bits. The maximum you can have in 8 bits unsigned is 255. So our 8-bit arithmetic result is actually 7 with a carryout of 1. So let's look at how that happens. 128 is a 1 with 7 zeros behind it. 135 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Adding together, we get a 1, a 1, and a 1. Uh, these all 0 together, and we look at the left-hand column. 1 plus 1 is a 0, and it carries a 1 into the imaginary next most column. We call that the carry bit. Now, our result is here. 
0000111, which is 7. But we've also created a carry uh, out. Now, technically, if we went back to this uh, previous example where we didn't have a carry out, technically it has a carry out of 0. So, no, that's what that means. Here, we had a carry out of 1. And we're going to use that uh, later on when, when we look at uh, CPU addition that uh, makes some do some uh, make some other decisions about things. Okay, here we have an exercise, and I, and you should pause and work on this uh, on your own to see if you get it right. Uh, I'm going to splice in me working on a whiteboard. Uh, uh, solving this. So you do do your own first, then look at the solution. Okay, this is the unsigned addition exercise um, that goes with the slide of the same name. So we're adding, let's see, let's see, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, plus one, zero, 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 one 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 okay so one and one are a zero with a carry of one to the next column one one and one is a one with a carry of one to the next column one and one is a zero with a carry of one to the next column one one and one is a one with a carry of zero to the next column. One, one, and zero is a zero with a carry of one. One, one, and zero is also a zero with a carry of one. One, zero, and zero is of course a one. And then one and one is a zero, and we have a carry out of one. So yes, we did in generate a carry out. And I'm going to go to calculator really quickly because I can't do these in my head. And a 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 is a decimal 74. Oops. Not 4. So the answer here is... Zero one zero zero one zero one zero with a carry out of one, aka decimal seventy four. Okay, we've looked at unsigned addition. Let's also look at signed addition because hey, we we deal with signed numbers sometimes. And the first thing to note about signed addition is it works exactly the same. The only difference is how we interpret the results. So here we have two numbers, negative 99 plus 59 should give me negative 40 as my result. And as we see, it will. So minus 99, positive 59, if we're looking at signed 8-bit addition. So once again, 1 plus 1 gives me 0, carry a 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 gives me 0, carry a 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 is 0, carry a 1. 1, 1, 1 is a 1, carry the 1. 1, 1, 1 is a 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is a 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is a 1, then 1 plus 0 is 1. I believe this is the same example that we saw in unsigned, except we're now treating it as signed. But you can check me on that. I can't remember. Um, again, both operands and the results must have the same number of bits. Now, if we treat this as signed addition, it's minus 99 plus 50, positive 59 gives me a minus 40. Again, the mechanics are the same as unsigned addition. The only difference is how we interpret the result. Uh, and this gives us a nice uh, property about computer processors themselves is that they use the same hardware for signed and unsigned addition. Not so big a deal these days when we have millions and billions of transistors at our disposal, uh, but back in the 
you know, 60s, 70s, and 80s when, you know, transistors were precious and memory was precious, this was a, a big savings in terms of how we built our CPUs. But it's also, it works out nicely mathematically, too. Now, with signed edition, the carry bit doesn't really mean anything. We are going to use it as part of signed edition when we, when we look at programs that do multi-byte signed edition. But for now, the carry bit, we actually ignore it. It doesn't matter for signed. We do have a situation, though, where we may perform an addition and the answer will look mathematically incorrect. So as an example, minus 127 plus negative 120. Mathematically, this should come out to negative 147, but we can't. That doesn't fit into our range of signed 8-bit numbers. What it will come out to be is a positive 7 with an overflow. So if we look at minus 127, this is our bit pattern. If we look at negative 129, this is our bit pattern. This is the result. It generates a carry bit, but we don't care. What we care about here is that I have two negative numbers that when added together give me a positive number. So two negative numbers added together should give me a negative number based on the math that we've we've learned for years doesn't happen because our, our, our the number of bits is fixed here so I have a, two negative numbers the result is positive therefore I have what's called an overflow here's a table you will probably have to memorize and I'll show you a short way to, to think about it in a second these are the overflow rules for signed edition and let me change that to where we actually say signed Overflow doesn't matter for unsigned. Again, carry bit is irrelevant. Don't even look at it. So we have two things we're adding together and getting a result. If we add two positive numbers together and get a negative result, then yes, we had an overflow. Because two positive things should give me also something positive. So if we have two positives, we get a positive, then yes, no overflow. Uh, if one is positive and negative, doesn't matter what the result is. It can never overflow. So a positive and a negative together will always fit within our range. So we reverse that, a negative and a positive, again, the same situation, doesn't matter, it will never overflow. If we have two negative numbers and the result is negative, again, that fits with our, ma our mathematical intuition, then no overflow. But the other situation where we can get an overflow is where we have two negative numbers, we add them together, we get a positive, that means we overflowed. So the easy way to remember this, if you if both things are the same and the result is different, you get an overflow. Both operands are the same, get a different get a differently signed result, then we had an overflow. Okay, here's another exercise. Again, pause the video, perform the the signed addition. And then I'll, I'll come back and work it out by hand for you. Okay, this is the exercise on the slide labeled Signed Edition Exercise. Um, I believe these are the same uh, numbers we saw earlier, but this time we are treating it as, as Signed Edition. So once again, 1 plus 1 is a 0, carry the 1, 1, 1, and 1. Is a one carry the one one zero and one is a zero carry the one 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 is a one carry the one 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 and zero is a zero carry the one one and one and zero is a zero carry the one one zero zero is a one no carry out and then 1 and 1 is a 0, and we do have a carry out of 1, but we don't care about that uh, with, with signed addition. What we're looking at here is negative, negative, positive. We added a negative number to a negative number, which means we should mathematically get a negative number. 
but instead we got a positive number. So we did in fact have an overflow. And let me see what that uh, final number was. Oh yeah, the final number is a 74 again here. We did have the did have the same bits as before. So whatever this negative number was plus that negative number uh, gave me a positive number. So we did in fact overflow according to our rules of overflow. Okay, now let's look at subtraction, starting with unsigned. Here we have an 8-bit unsigned subtraction. 25 minus 13 should mathematically give me 12. So here are the bits for 25, here are the bits for 13, and we're doing a subtraction. I'm going to switch to the whiteboard and show you this uh, interactively because the, the concept of borrowing is kind of hard to do in a static slide. Okay, this is the example for the slide um, listed as unsigned subtra subtraction. Uh, it's, a, it's 25 minus 13 in decimal. So in the first column, we have 1 minus 1. Well, that's easy. That's a 0. Next, we have a 0 minus 0. That's easy. That's also a 0. But then we have a 0 minus 1. To properly make that work, we're going to borrow a zero from the previous column, effectively making this one zero. And if you remember your, your binary, one zero is decimal two. So two minus one gives me one. Now we move to the next column and we have a zero minus 1. Well, once again, we can't do that, so we're going to borrow again. We're going to make that 1 a 0 and move the 1 over to here to make that 1 0, aka 2. So 1 0 minus 1 gives me a 1. Next column, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0. And so our, our final result is 1101, a.k.a. 12. Just double-checking my math, yes. And, of course, 25 minus 13 is 12, so we have the result we, we expect to get. Um, the question, was there a borrow um, into our 8 bits? No. We never had to bring in a borrow from outside. Um, also, was there uh, an overflow? No, there wasn't because I'm sorry. This is this is unsigned subtraction, so there can't be a um, there can't be an overflow. Um, we can only uh, ha have a, a carry situation. So yeah, we're done now. Uh, we have a twelve. Okay, now that you've seen that, pause the video, try out this unsigned subtraction exercise, and then unpause and I'll have a worked solution for you. Okay, this is the answer to the slide um, that I had you work yourself, uh, titled Unsigned Subtraction Exercise. So let's work through that. Starting from the right, one minus one is a zero. 1 minus 1 is also 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Now things are going to get a little weird because I have a 0 minus 1, which needs to get a carry, but I also have a 0 beside it, which needs to grab a carry, which has a 0 beside it, which needs to grab a carry, uh, a borrow, sorry. Um, which we'll get from here. So I'm going to take this one, make it a zero. This becomes a one zero, but we also we still have to propagate our our, our borrows backwards. So I'm going to make that a one, so this can be a one zero. But I'm also going to make that a one, so this can be a one zero. 
and now I can finish my um, subtraction. So 1, 0, minus 1 is a 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. And then I have a 0 minus 1, which says I still need to pull from my borrow. So we have an imaginary borrow. We bring it in to make that a 1, 0. And my final result is that. Which, let's double, let's pull up my calculator and do 1, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, looks like that is 212. Remember, this is unsigned subtraction, so we, have a, we always have a positive result. And yes, we did generate a borrow, our borrow in. Now we're going to signed subtraction. We did unsigned, we'll move to, move to signed. Once again, it works just like unsigned subtraction in terms of how you borrow and, 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 and so forth, uh, just like addition did for uh, signed and unsigned. The only difference is that we now have, um, you know, we have different rules for overflow versus, you know, the carry bits and stuff for, for unsigned. Now we have uh, sign subtraction, 25 minus 13 gives me 12. Uh, for this, doesn't really look any different because there's no overflow. So both operands were positive. We got a positive result. Doesn't change anything. So was there an overflow? No, there wasn't. Let's look at something more interesting, though. Now we have sign subtraction with overflow. And in this example, we have negative 74 minus 119 should gives me should give me 63 so it wraps around the giving meaning an overflow and again i'm going to shift to the whiteboard and work this out interactively so you can see how the uh, you know, the borrows and things okay so subtraction with overflow is the title of the slide this draws from Starting with from the rightmost column, we have 0 minus 1. Let's pull in a borrow from the next column over. It gives us 1, 0, minus 1 for a 1. In this column, we have 0 minus 1. So once again, we need to create a bar we need to borrow from the, the, the next column over. So now we have 1, 0, minus 1 gives me 1. Here we have 0, minus 1. So we need to borrow. We've got a few zeros. I'm just going to skip over. I'm going to make that one a 0, that one a 1, 0. And now I can borrow 1 from it to do that column. So my 1, 0, minus 1 gives me a 1. Let's do that one in black. In this column, we have 1 minus 0 gives me 1. In this column, we have another 0 minus 1, so we're going to have to borrow again. So I'm going to make that one a 0 and that one a 1. 1, 0, sorry. So we have 1, 0 minus 1 gives me a 1. This column I have a 0 minus a 1, so I'm going to have to do some borrowing again. Uh, there's a 0 there, and so keep going. A 0 there, 1 there, so I'm going to borrow from that one. That makes that a 0. That makes this one a 1, 0. But I'm going to borrow 1 off that to give me a, a 1, 0 there. So my 1, 0 minus 1 is a 1. This column, my 1 minus a 1 is a 0. In this column, I have a 0 minus 0 for 0. So according to my rules of overflow, which I'm going to cheat because I can never remember what the ones for subtraction are.
we started with a negative and a positive. And my result was positive. So if we look at the slide labeled overflow rules for subtraction, that means we did in fact overflow. And I apologize for the thunder in the background. There's a rainstorm going on right now. Um, and now I'll return you back to the, uh, the rest of the presentation. Flow. Now we're to the overflow rules for subtraction. So if we have x minus y gives a result. If both x and y are positive, doesn't matter what the result is, there's no overflow. If x is positive, and y is negative, and we get a negative result, there's an overflow. And you can think of this as we're subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So it would be like take a positive, add a positive, and get a negative. So yes, that's an overflow situation. If we have a positive, we subtract a negative, and we get a positive. So it's really like positive plus positive gives, gives a positive, no overflow. If we have a negative and subtract a negative, it doesn't matter because it's really like adding a positive. So a negative plus a positive never can overflow. Uh, if we have a negative and we subtract a positive and give, get a positive, then yes, we got an overflow. If we have a negative and subtract a positive and get a negative, no overflow. Again, carry bit is irrelevant. One more exercise. Once again, pause. Work this as uh, signed 8-bit subtraction, and then I'll come back uh, and, and show you this worked on the whiteboard. Okay, this is the video, uh, the worked example to go along with the slide that says signed subtraction exercise. And apologies, I forgot to pre-write my bits, so... 1-0-0-0-1-1-1-1 for the first operand minus one zero one 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 zero one one okay all right sign subtraction as we've talked about before the mechanics are exactly the same as unsigned so we borrow as needed and and, and perform our subtraction so uh, one minus one is zero one minus one is zero one minus zero is one one minus one is zero and then we're going to do our, our borrows here. And I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to go all the way to the end because I know I'm going to have to borrow there. And it's going to propagate to that 1, so I'm going to make that a 0. Makes that a 1, 0, but we're going to make that a 1, so we can make that a 1, 0, and a 1, and make that a 1, 0. So 1, 0 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 minus 1 requires a borrow in of 1. So the 1, 0 minus 1 is 1. So we get 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Um, now, the first question is, did we overflow? So let's look at our sign bits. The signs of our original um, operands are negative and negative, and the sign of our result is also negative. So no, uh, we, wait, let me double check my rules because I can never quite remember this one. Uh, I'm right, so yes, we, both were negative, doesn't matter what the result is, we can't overflow in, in this situation. Uh, because effectively we're, we're adding a positive when we subtract a negative. So uh, a negative plus you know something that was positive here is impossible to overflow. So yeah, if we negative subtract a negative, it's impossible to get to get an overflow. So we did not in this case. Last couple of remarks. Why does carry and overflow matter? So 
here is I went to JShell and printed out what integer dot max value and integer um, dot max value plus one is. So if you look at integer dot max value, this is two raised to the 31, uh, 31st power minus one, which is just a little bit over two billion. If I add one to that, it rolls around to the actual integer dot min value. So negative two, approximately two billion. Again, integer in, in Java is a 32-bit value. Eventually there gets to be a, a, a limit on what we can represent. And once you add past that, it's going to wrap around. It's not going to, to stop at the top. Um, it's going to go back around. Ideally, this has some ramifications for testing. If you're testing things that involve integers, you really should test at integer.max value and integer.min value because of the overflow situation. Now, when we look at carry outs and overflows in terms of a computer processor, a CPU, I've mentioned this several times before, the CPU uses the same hardware for unsigned and signed addition as well as unsigned and signed subtraction. Mathematically, there's no difference. Only difference is how we interpret the result. The hardware in the CPU is designed to tell us if a carry is created or if overflow occurs. So there's a special bit called the carry bit um, that is set to one if we do unsigned addition and it has a carry out. The, the CPU also has a special V bit for overflow that is set to one if an overflow occurs. And, the, and we ignore this if we're interpreting this as an unsigned integer. Um, and something we will see later is that if we're doing unsigned subtraction, we actually set our carry bit to one before doing the subtraction. And this becomes our borrow in for the, the, the operation. Uh, this might be specific to the CPU we're using. I don't know because I haven't looked at another CPU in, in many years. All right, that's it for today. Um, we will uh, maybe do some more of these exercises in class. Again, always ask if, if you have questions.